All right. Hello, and welcome back to the Thought Cloud podcast. Our goal with this conversation is to uncover a hidden gem that can inspire others along their academic journey. Our guest today is Chloe Villemure. Chloe is an undergraduate studying business at the University of New Hampshire. Chloe has been the president for the Atkins Group at UNH, which is a group where students invest a portfolio about $450,000 into stocks, REITs, and bonds, and bond ETFs. And she has also helped design, run, and improve the university's Paul Scholar program, which is a prestigious program for high achieving students in the business school where she is studying. She also has started her own landscaping company in high school. And on top of that, she is serving as a real estate investment intern for Constellation Capital. Chloe, you have so much to share with us. I'm super excited to dig into your story, hear about your path, what got you into the direction you're headed, and uh, get to know you a little bit more. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm, yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, let's kick it off. So how did you first side, decide on going to UNH? How did this decision come about? Very good question. Okay, so I am from New Hampshire. Both my parents went to UNH and my grandfather went to UNH. So I actually didn't want to go to UNH at all. I applied to 15 other schools in hopes of not going to UNH. But then I ended up getting to the Paul Scholar program, um, which, like you mentioned, is a pretty prestigious program. It's the top 40 uh, business students in the business school. And that came with some scholarship money. So it basically became pretty much a clear choice that I had to go to UNH and it ended up being the best decision that I could have made. It's the connections I've made there, the opportunities I've had have been insane. And I, I would die for that school. I love UNH. It's so, it's a good, it's a great place to be. So that's kind of how I ended up going there. Uh, didn't want to, but I like a lot of New Hampshire kids. That's the case. And then I ended up really liking it. So did you not want to go there just because you grew up there and you're like, I, don't, I need to get out of here. Like, I need to move on. I was like, oh, like, it's just expected because my parents went here. And yeah, I wanted to leave New Hampshire and do something else. But then honestly, though, UNH is such a great school that it was just my own um, kind of beliefs that were leading me to feel that way and nothing actually like the school is so great honestly like they have everything you could ever want so what were your doubts like about the school prior to going to the school honestly honestly like I didn't even know that much about it I was just like so one thing I was like I was touring schools and I was like they need to have Bloomberg terminals of course UNH does but I was like oh they're not gonna have them or like I was like I don't know it's just not gonna be it's gonna be not I don't know I went to I also went to a Catholic um pretty competitive high school and so in doing that my class was really competitive with the schools that we went to and so everyone's kind of competing because we were so close in GPA and like the big name schools really meant a lot to people so I remember people saying oh you're going to UNH I thought you were smart or like yeah. um different things like that yeah, and cool not cool just because it's your state school it doesn't mean it's a bad school so um I don't know just like hearing what other people thought I think I paid too much attention to that now I don't really care but you're in high school that's kind of how you are so right yeah. yeah I remember that when I was in high school too it was like oh they, like they only accept so many people from the north of Nevada like blah 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 and you're like there's so much to keep up with I can't even keep up with it like I'm just you know follow your path do your thing and so that's what you did you went to UNH and you said no this is actually a great school so what were some of the things there that you found that you just were, you know, impressed by, enamored by, like, wow, like, this is such a cool spot? I think the business school in itself is beautiful. Um, it got redone in 2013, went from the Whittemore School to the Peter T. Paul College of Business and Economics. So basically, they redid the entire building, moved its location, and it's beautiful. Um, the classrooms are amazing. Everything's state of the art. That's fantastic. But then also just... I remember touring the school and walking around my first few days and the environment was so good and the people were so friendly. Like it just felt like such a community and I didn't really have that so much in high school. So it seemed like everyone was just so nice and willing to help. Yeah. Um, I also really liked that it was in, there's a little college town, um, green grass, brick buildings. Like that's always kind of what I pictured. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, being in the Paul Scholars program was a huge addition too, just because it did come with scholarships and it kind of did um, give me a group of people to start the school with, which was great. 
Definitely, definitely, definitely. I guess, yeah, that's a, a really cool part. So with that scholarship program, tell us a little bit about that. So you received that. How do you receive that scholarship? And what does that give you as you go in? Yeah, so I actually didn't even know I had received it at first. All of a sudden, my dad was like, oh, you need to go to this Admitted Students Day thing. Um, there's a dinner. And I was like, oh, it's going to be Admitted Students Day with all the other kids from my school that got into UNH. Um, it turned out it was not, I went there and it was just specifically for Paul Scholars, what we're called, um, which are, like I said, the top 40 business students. So pretty small group of kids in the big scheme of UNH. Um, and so I went to this dinner and they talked about how great it was, basically just how um, we'll have direct relationships with our like career advisors um, and our academic advisors. Uh, we'll all take classes together. We get to move in three days earlier. And then it came with scholarship money. So I found out about it through going to that dinner. And then they going to that dinner really changed my perspective on it. And I was like, oh, I gotta come here. That's really cool. And so what do you think set yourself up to get that scholarship? Like, why were you of the top 40? Um, I think in, well, I have always done pretty well in school. Um, I'm, I'm super hard on myself. So definitely just very self-critical and just, but also really motivated. So I'm a, just always been a hard worker. And I think that that was shown in my studies at, in high school. And I was just all, also always wanted to do every opportunity that I could. Like, I just love being active in the community and I love doing all the extracurricular activities, doing volunteering, things like that. And I think that probably made me stand out a little bit. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And so with kind of your extracurricular stuff, you started a landscaping company in high school. So how did that come about? How did you say, this is, I'm going to do this. And are you still doing it? So I'm not really still doing it now just because I have a full-time job and our truck um, kind of broke down. But yeah, so my brother and I and our friend Eddie started it in high school. I think I was, gosh, it was actually such a long time ago now. I was 16 because I had the car, I, had a, I could drive. And then my brother was probably 15 and our friend Eddie was probably 16 as well. Um, but yeah, so we, and we just started making flyers. It originally was called chore boys. Um, cause my brother named it. And then I was like, I'm not a boy and I'm doing a lot of the work. Like we're going to call it Chloe's chore boys. So, so we compromised, which was kind of good just cause then people are like, I don't know. It was, it was a respected enough. Name. It has a good so, ring to it. It has a good ring to it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So people like that too. And so, yeah, we started out just making flyers and putting them uh, in people's like door frames and then um, eventually a restaurant in Manchester we they became one of our clients and they let us put their our flyers in their restaurant and then we got a lot of clients through that so it kind of seems like old-fashioned the whole flyer thing but it really worked out um, and then through the years so we did it pretty small that year and then our next year we got bigger the third year I was solely running it um, and it was kind of my thing. And it was honestly so good. My work that I, the place I worked at was really cool with me taking a day off a week or like a couple of days off to do fully that during the day. And then a lot of times I'd have to um, go after work to do mowing and stuff. But yeah, it was honestly super, a, such a good experience to run our business. And then also yeah. I think that everyone should do manual labor at some point in their life. I think <laughs> that it's like a really good character, character builder, builder. Yeah, exactly. yeah yes exactly that's what my dad always told me when I was picking weeds like hey that's a good character builder you know it is mm, it's it a very is. good character it builder. Is. <laughs> so you did it all so tell us a little bit about that you were also working on your hands and knees but you were kind of managing it as well is that is that what it sounds like yeah so I was getting clients talking to clients setting the prices um kind of doing all like the administrative stuff too um, especially it was, it's, I don't know, it just worked out that that was, I'm pretty good with people. And that was my strong suit. Like, honestly, even though I'm not landscaping still, I have relationships with some of the, some of those clients still. Um, and a lot of them are older people, but I feel like they're my friends because well, like you just build those relationships by talking and having that, uh, like customer kind of like, I don't know, conversations and having to talk business with them. So. I don't know why am I, am I can you hear me now 
Now I can. I don't know why my mic just got muted. Okay. Now I can't hear you. Here we go. You can't hear, you can't hear me. No, I got you now. I got you now. <laughs> I don't know what it is at this, but um, okay, awesome. So that's a really cool experience. That's a really cool experience. And so then you went on to college and did you stop at kind of around college, like when everything started for you or did you continue through? I still continued through. Um, this is my first year actually not doing it. Um, so I did it pretty much solely by myself. And I actually had a few people working for me. I actually, my mom started working for me too, which is kind of fun. So oh. um, it was during the pandemic, especially because it was so it was such a weird time and she had a lot of time off because she worked in a hospital. So then she started working for me. Um, and so like she became friends with some of the clients. I don't know. It was just like a really good experience. I did it throughout my college summers, um, except this year, but yeah. Gotcha. Very cool. Very cool. Well, that's, that's a neat experience. And you know, you said it best. It's always two things you said that I really liked. One is the idea that, you know, it's great to get some manual labor in your life and to learn how to actually work with your hands and get dirty. And then the other one is just starting a business. I think that's a really cool thing that you were able to do at such a young age. Um, yes that taught me so much and I think that's probably why I ended up going to business school too because that kind of inspired me and then I don't know I just feel like I have that entrepreneurial spirit that will keep me in it definitely 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 and you know you said it earlier like you're motivated and you're really self-critical which I think every entrepreneur needs to <laughs> needs to have so um yeah I love that I love that so talk to us now you got to UNH did you always know you wanted to study business there? Did you switch it up ever? How did this <laughs> path kind of get decided? Yeah, so actually I knew I wanted to do business. I didn't know really what, but in going into college, I was like, I'm going to be an accountant. I'm going to study accounting, 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 accounting. That Why was my accounting? major. Why accounting, accounting, accounting? I think because I was so, comp well, not I wasn't that competitive, but in my high school, we were all so competitive and I was, in some of the advanced classes and they put me in the gifted classes growing up, like even in middle school. And so I think that just in that environment, because my high school is really small too, I was just like, I need to be doing the most challenging things I can do in order to feel successful, mm -hmm. which is not the case at all. And as I've, I've been doing, I don't know, a lot of growing this year and maturing, and I've totally realized that that is not the case. Um, and if you're not even enjoying something, then you should not be doing it. And so I think I was doing just accounting for the wrong reasons. So this year I had kind of a awakening, almost like a quarter life crisis in the beginning of the year when I was in all these accounting classes. Um, and I was like, wait, these are the classes I hate the most. Like I was like, I'm in all these classes that I really love this is my major class and I cannot stand it. Yeah. And so then I was like, I'm in this investment group that I absolutely love. And I've always liked doing things that are more, I guess, like thinking through the process and like, um, honestly, like tangible things mm -hmm. um, and not so much just like following the rules and journal entrying and all. I know there's more to that than accounting in accounting, but that's kind of like, yeah, it's dry, yeah. definitely. And I have a creative mind and I was like, this is just a waste of my creativity mm -hmm. and of the skills that I have to offer. So I switched my major to, I was doing accounting and finance. And then this year I switched to finance and ISBA, which is information systems and business analytics, which kind of gives me more of that hands-on feel because I can do coding, working with Excel, things like that. So definitely the switching the major thing was a really scary thing for me. Um, it was definitely not an easy decision to do either just because I had, I almost kind of, it felt like I was losing my identity a little bit just because yeah. I had been saying I was going to do accounting for so long um, that I was like, oh my gosh, like, who am I? But obviously you're more than your college major. And the whole thing was a really big growing experience. And that's something that I do hope other people can hear and say like it's okay to switch your major even if you've been sat on it for such a long time that right. you you can switch and it'll be okay right so you made that switch around sophomore or junior year june beginning of junior year so yeah just 2021 and does that put you back at all or are you still on track how does that play with your schedule so i was st i'm still on track because i switched early enough and then I was also already taking finance classes too gotcha. so it basically just meant I did kind of waste a semester in accounting classes but I mean there's still good knowledge in that like I still right. appreciate those classes I took I did love the challenge of it and I didn't 
it wasn't like I did bad in them and I still enjoyed what I was learning, but not that much. Like I knew I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. Right. Totally. Totally. Well, very cool. I mean, I think that's awesome. And you just said it perfectly. Like, yeah, you can always switch. You can always adjust. I think I switched a lot, um, honestly. And then I ended up picking a degree that allowed me to switch within that degree. Like it was like an applied math, whatever, but um, yeah, that's awesome that you're able to find that and awesome. You're able to kind of dig into more of what you like. And you also said that your major doesn't define you. So I think that's a really cool thing to say, because, you know, you have done a lot regarding your investment group outside of just your classes. So talk to us about that. So you're a member of the, you're the president of the Atkins investment group at UNH. What is the story at the Atkins investment group and what do you guys do? Yeah. Um, so I, I was the director of recruiting last year, so I kind of have the whole spiel down, <laughs> but, um, I'm going to keep it not as structured, but, um, we're so basically we're a student run investment fund of around 400,000 of, um, assets under management with both long equities and fixed income. Um, and we, the cool thing about our group is I'm pretty sure we're the only group at UNH that's completely student run. So our, we do have two advisors, but they're super hands off. Mm -hmm. So it's just, we make the decision. So basically how a class works, we meet twice a week during class time. So they're an hour and a half each. And um, each of the, th the 13 sectors have three students in them, a sector leader and two analysts. And at the beginning of each class, the sector leader that's presenting that day will go over a brief macroeconomic overview. And then the sector leader and their two analysts will take us through the sector holdings, either deciding to keep holding the companies we have in them or pitching a buy or a sell. So it's really cool. And it's actually probably the most relevant experience for the finance field. Um, like the experiential learning is so huge and it's just, the opportunity that we have to be investing real money is like, there's nothing like it. Yeah. That's all. How do you guys get the funds? Who invests in your uh, portfolio? Um, so it was a donation given. I'm not sure when it was, but it was a donation that we've just grown. I think we've got and a few other donations throughout the years, but we've just grown that. And so, um, yeah, you can apply to get into the group when you're at the end of your freshman year. That's what I did. But then anytime after that, and there's 41 kids in the group. So it's very, um, it's like kind of an exclusive group and but you apply to get in you interview and then um yeah then you learn from there it's definitely a steep learning curve I remember getting in there and not knowing anything I read this investment banking textbook over the summer because I was like oh my gosh I don't know anything but I mean you learn so much just by doing it and I don't think I would be in the job I'm at in right now if I didn't have that yeah definitely that's that's a really cool experience um and so you guys have grown that and you work together to come up with these theses. You said that, you know, people present, you talk about buying and selling. Um, what are some difficulties you've run into as a team, you know, kind of going through that process? Have you ever had it to the point where it's 50, 50 split. We want to buy, we want to sell, or no, we need to change verticals and we need to look more on this side of the market. Like how complex does it get between you as a team? It's pretty complex and definitely I think my sophomore year, our debate during Q and A, it would get pretty heated. Um, I remember that I was in a, I was in the consumer staple sector and someone was pitch, someone in my sector was pitching a buy on Chegg and the debate we had just about the ethics of that and if we should be doing that were crazy. And so then, yeah, we vote at the end and we've had before where it's like a 50, 50, 50 split or like. And then we have to revote, kind of have to do more debating, more questioning. Mm. But overall, I mean, as a group, we all want the same outcome. We all want to meet the S&P. That's our goal. We're all working mm -hmm. together, even though we're individual sectors. So right. it's pretty, we're all there for the same reasons. So yeah, we, yeah, we get it done. I love that. That's so cool. Well, did you guys end up buying or selling Chegg or not buying? We bought Chegg, but then a few semesters later, we sold it. Good. Um, Good. Yeah. Got out at the right time. I mean, I know right now they're taking a dump. Oh my God. Yeah. We lost some money on that definitely, but it was, I mean, the whole thing is just a learning experience, which is good. Like people right. are always like, oh, you invest your school's endowment. And I'm like, no, it's strictly educational. Like what we have, obviously we care about that. We don't want to lose money, but it's right. also for learning purposes. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. No, I think that's great. Um, yeah. Well, cool. I think that's so cool that you're a part of that group. And you said that it's helped you get your job now. So talk to us about 
what you're doing now, where you're at, and kind of the ins and outs of it. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm working at Valentine Partners. It's a wealth management firm based out of Waltham, Mass. Um, but they have a few other offices around. Um, but I, it kind of, this happened all pretty last minute at the end of the semester. I was supposed to be working at EY, um, doing audit, but then this kind of rolled my way. And I was like, this is such a great opportunity to learn. I think internships should be more about learning than anything else. So right. I took this internship um, and it's been great. I'm learning so much. So in Atkins to that investment group, we have a lot of guest speakers and we've been having a lot about from wealth managers. And then that kind of like gave me the idea. I was like, Ooh, that's a really cool career. I should do that. And then this happened to kind of be the right time, right fit thing. So I've been doing that. I've been on working on all sorts of different research projects on the investment team. Um, so doing due diligence about different private companies, um, going over some impact investing. So looking into different funds, um, for, with ESG in mind, um, a lot of private credit, private equity, some real estate stuff, which I'm super interested in. So it's been a, it's been a, such a good experience. Wow. And do you think that you'd want to try another experience afterwards or do you like the idea of wealth management? That's a good question. That's kind of a question that's been on my mind a lot recently too, with my senior year coming about what to do. And my thing is I love constantly learning. So I feel like this job I'm in now, I am constantly learning. So I guess until I stopped learning and it'd be like, I would keep doing it, but I also could see myself doing other things. I've always wanted to do real estate investing. Yeah. So I want to do that too. Um, so definitely kind of covered my own path. So, so we will see. Definitely. Well, we're going to take a quick little break and then we are going to jump right back into it. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. We are back and we were just talking with Chloe about her experience in her wealth management internship, what she's been learning there, how she wants to continue to explore different opportunities if she feels like she needs to continue learning. Um, she's got a lot, a lot of interests, um, but very cool. And you also, so you mentioned something about being interested in real estate and I saw also that you had worked for Constellation, which does real estate investment. So talk to us a little bit about that how did you get involved in constellation what would you do there and what were some of your big learning experiences yeah um so i've i got into real estate actually um from i worked at this company called brady selvin properties they're a real estate company in manchester new hampshire but they have properties all over the place um and i did their kind of accounting there so i was on the accounts payable team and i did that for two years and I really, that's a huge company. And I really liked learning what I did there. Um, so that was really cool. It gave me a good idea of commercial and residential real estate. Mm -hmm. And um, it's pretty awesome. And then my brother, actually, I have a younger brother. He's 19 right now. Um, and he didn't go to college and he's doing, he's working at the company on doing maintenance work, but he also does flip houses on the side. Oh, neat. And that's always been really, really interesting to me too, what he does is seeing that, but I feel like I could, I want to do more investing in rental properties, I think. And so throughout my time, my sophomore year of college, I was in this finance class and I got in touch or I had this professor, um, Alex Talcott, his name is, and he's the owner of New Constellation Capital. Um, and he used to be like, I think Lex Dan Real Estate. And he and I, he's my mentor um, and he and I, started kind of he's been teaching me a lot we've been I don't want to say like working together but like I guess working together like we he kind of shows me a lot like we go, takes me on on these experiences that get kind of gets me to see some real world real estate life so I've been to different real estate auctions um I've gone to all these I don't we might want to cut this part out but um <laughs> I, I'm like rambling but um no so I've just he's shown me a lot in the field and so I working with him basically just do a lot of research about different areas so looking online even about like for example like crime rates in an area like would this be an area he'd want to invest in mm. um so kind of going through different places he's interested in investing in with his partners and team and then all I was kind of the one doing research behind it but really because I like to learn so much he has given me um 
a lot of opportunities with that. So that's kind of what I want to do um, in the future is invest in real estate properties. Yeah, Although, definitely. Do you see that like you're liking one versus the other in terms of equities versus real estate? Or do you like just the idea of investing in general? Or how does that play in your head? I think I like the idea of investing in general. Um, I like kind of, so what I'm learning also, everything is tying together, but what I'm learning in the wealth management job that I'm in now is that having a diversified portfolio with some real assets such as real estate, but then also investing in real estate, I mean, in equities is so important having just a diversified portfolio in general. Um, so also I was the REIT sector leader in my Atkins investment group. Oh, cool. And that- For listeners that don't know what a REIT is, you could say that for them. Oh yes, of course. So a REIT is a real, a real estate investment trust. So basically it's like um, a company that you're basically investing in a company that has a bundle of real estate properties. Um, so for example, Alexandria is a company that I pitched a hold on last semester and they hold a bunch of life science properties um, across the Boston area. So that's just, cool. that's an example. Um, but so I did learn a lot doing that and I definitely have a lot of real estate knowledge, which was good. And that contributed to knowing more. Um, and so I learned a lot doing that. I'm very, I am really passionate about real estate. Definitely want, I want to invest as soon as I can. Yeah, definitely. That's super cool. I, I, I actually got my real estate license when I was in college and I did that for a little bit. And I thought it was really, I, I did have a wealth management internship, loved it, loved it to death, but the real estate, something about it was a little bit more kind of juices you up. I don't know how to explain it. it. Yes, that's a really great way to describe it. Juices you up. Yeah, no, it's so <laughs> exciting. I people that talk about real estate too, and that you're all passionate about it. It's so fun. Oh my um, gosh! And I always notice. So I listen to a lot of real estate podcasts and stuff, and like the community in the real estate world, I feel like they're not like super. At least the people I know, they're not like super cutthroat. Like everyone kind of is like they're they'll cheer you on and like they'll help you and yeah. like. They want to give you advice. It's good. Right. Yeah, no, it's it's very, you know, let's be friends so we can work together. I I totally know what you're saying. hundred percent. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. Well, it'll be cool to see what direction you decide to take um, and what you decide to dig into. Do you think graduate school is in the picture for you or is it workforce and build it from there? I think, so I won't do grad school right away. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I want some time in the workforce to kind of figure out more my path. I could picture myself getting a CFA or a CFP. Yeah. Um, I kind of, we had a guest speaker come in one time and they said, you can, you can earn a CFA. You have to buy an MBA. And so uh, it was kind of a cool perspective because I'm always kind of battling that in my head of, and I think a lot of students are too, of what to do after school. Do you get certified for something? Do you go to grad school? Do you work? And I think that was a cool perspective. So I think I want to wait a little bit and save some money and figure out what I want to do. Yeah, that's a great, I, I mean, yeah, you've got plenty of time to do it and it's never too late to adjust, change, do something new. Um, I like the field that you're in as well, just because it gives you a lot of exposure to so many different fields. I think that's one of the coolest parts about what you're doing with finance. It's like, you could be looking at all of these different sectors and find something and all of a sudden you've got skills that can support companies within that industry. I think that's just awesome. Yeah, very cool. Well, I think the last thing that I wanna to touch on before we get into the rapid fire round is the idea of, so yes, you are a Paul Scholar, but you have helped this program since you've been at school. So talk to us about the impacts that you've made there and kind of the leadership that you've taken on. Yeah, um, so I like I love the Paul Scholar program and I love people. So I think that has been a huge asset in helping me kind of help run this program. So basically, I think what I am more than anything is a mentor to a lot of these kids. So they it's a so you move in early in this program. And every year I've gone to help out during that orientation where they move in early. So I'm a familiar face that they'll have. Um, as an upperclassman throughout their time, which is cool. So they, they all know Chloe, like, and I, they know me as the Paul Scholar mentor or the Paul Scholar intern. So um, I think that is huge when you're going to college, just having a face to know. 
Um, but besides that, I've had, I don't want to say socials, but like kind of like different like individual class, like sophomore class, um, like dinner and we'll do some activities. Um, so I'll cater, I'll get food catered, um, which is cool to plan. You talk to these companies, like I was going to Chipotle ordering enough food for like a hundred people, which is crazy to order from Chipotle <laughs> or like, I don't know, like I ordered like 60 Jersey Mike subs one time for like these dinners I have. And then, so I guess that kind of bring people together. I'm definitely good at that. And then um, I've also held different things like bingos or um activities sort of like that to just bring people together because a lot of times with this program after freshman year when you're not all living together and hanging out all the time you lose touch yeah so I think kind of it's my job to once in a while bring everyone back together so we can all kind of chat remember that we're all part of this kind of family and um yeah just catch up and stuff so it's not like I think that my role is not, is different than what I do like in school with my major. Like it's much different than investing. It's a lot mm-hmm. different than the finance thing. It's more people oriented, right. but I do, I love doing that. Like, I love yeah. talking to people and doing stuff like that. So that's awesome. No, I think that that's, that's great. And obviously giving back to something that's meant so much to you, it's um, something that's helped you decide on the school itself. So um, that's wonderful. Well, Chloe, we're going to go into our rapid fire round now, and we are going to just ask you a question and you're just going to shoot back whatever comes to mind. So okay, all right. here we go. The first one, what is your favorite book? Ooh, favorite book. That's a really good question. Wow. I'm not good at these. I want to say so many things. <laughs> um, of course, I can't think of my book. Okay, well, right now I'm reading this The Book of Joy by um it's the Dalai Lama and one of the archbishops that book I'm I'm not even done yet so good what's it what's it called the book of joy the book of joy why what does it does it make you feel joyful or like what (laughs) how does it work it's just about finding joy in life suffering and just like from these two pretty spiritual or like the Dalai Lama is Buddhist this archbishop's Christian they're talking, they're friends, talking about what makes them feel joy. It's really good. Yeah. Um, I definitely recommend that sounds it. Really good. Maybe I need some of that in my life. I need to go read, read the it. Joy. I think everyone should read it. Um, I, and I also love Rich Dad Poor Dad, of course, like oh. every business does. And um, oh my gosh, I want to oh, a fun book, um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That's a fun book. <laughs> Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Okay, interesting. I love it. All right, next question. Who is your most influential role model? Ooh, good question again. Um, I honestly say my dad. I don't know. I just have a really, I have a good relationship with my dad and he inspires me a lot. He was a business major at UNH, definitely grew up more like not having a lot of money, really made the most of his time at UNH, made the most of his life is just a really wise man. Wow. I love that. I love that. Okay. Who is your favorite teacher or professor and what grade was that? Oh my gosh. I think actually my favorite professor I had in college, um, Professor Russell Miles at the University of New Hampshire. He was my quantitative decision-making teacher. Mm-hmm. And that's a class a lot of people don't really like, but um, I loved it. It was my favorite class ever. And oh my gosh, he's just the best. I love it. I love it. Professor Miles, you're the man. Um, okay. Next question. What are you most looking forward to in your next year? at UNH um, last year right senior year yeah no I'm definitely looking forward to experiencing all I have great roommates looking forward to living with them again looking forward to leading the Atkins investment group I think that's the next step in my journey in that group and then I'm also going to be competing at a powerlifting meet in November so that will probably be my last one for a while so I'm really looking forward to that too your last one for a while meaning what you're just gonna like after college you're gonna take a little break or yeah, I mean, I that's the plan. I say that now, but like, who knows? But <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. We were off uh, off air when we were kind of talking a little bit about your powerlifting, but that is such a cool thing. Uh, go check out her article she posted on Substack. You said right? Yeah, it's called "Lifting Metal to Lift Your Mental." Cool. Yeah, check that out. It's it's gonna be a great read. All right, next question. Um, 
What is the most stressful part of being a student day in and day out? Oh my gosh. Um, probably balancing everything. I think that's probably a huge one for students, just balancing school, friends, relationships, family, yeah. eating, the gym, stuff like that. Right. That's probably difficult. And then also just figuring out who you are in college. That's the time you do it. And that can be really stressful and hard. Totally, totally, totally. Who is the, who is your favorite person that you've ever studied with? Ooh, that I've ever studied with. Wow, these are really good questions, Oliver. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say I, okay, my, in my Atkins group, um, two, I had this really good sector. I was in the utility sector and my friend Pat and my friend Emma were both in it. And that we was just we just had so much fun together and we had like great presentations. It was a great time. So probably them. Awesome. awesome. That's so awesome. hard because I'm in the Paul Scholars group. They're all great people. I love everyone. <laughs> everyone Chloe studied with is awesome, just for the yeah. record. Um, okay, wonderful. What would you say the most meaningful way for students to help each other is? Um, I'd say being open-minded towards everyone so no matter who you're studying with who you're hanging out with just everyone's going through something and I don't know everyone's on their own path and it's definitely easy to judge a book by its cover or be comp really competitive with someone um but I'd say just like greet everything with an open mind like with school with classmates anything like that and that you can help you can help each other by just doing that because then you'll be a kinder person yeah definitely 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 and what would you say your top piece of advice is for those who are early in their educational journey? Mm, I'd say it's okay if you don't know what you're going to do. Um, kind of just try out a lot of things and do things that you're interested in, not things that other people are interested in. Um, also, don't try to take the easy way out. If you're really interested in a class, but you've heard it's really hard, Take it anyways, because you're interested in it. So you're going to love it. I love that. That's wonderful. That's a great answer. Next question is, what is your biggest hope to accomplish during your time on earth? Mm, wow. That's such a good question too. Um, I want to make a difference. I, I really just want to make an impactful difference in, in someone's life, life. Like I just want to, I don't need to have like the most money or be the most successful, but I just want to make a difference. I love that. Well, I don't Absolutely. know what it is yet, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's such a great answer. Well, Chloe, it's been such a pleasure having you on and learning about your path, learning about what's brought you to where you are now, where you hope to go, and where can people follow what you're up to and everything that you've got going on? Yeah. Um, so you can follow my Instagram, it's Chloe Villamure. Um, my LinkedIn is probably Chloe Villamore, but I need to be better at posting on that. Um, and then if I write more on Substack, pretty sure it's also Chloe Villamore. So I love it. We'll go get yeah. her Chloe Villamore. And on that note, thank you so, so much for being a guest here. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and, and hearing everything you've got going on. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having me. It's been so much fun talking to you.